Hello and welcome. So in this video, we're going to cover what is decreasing returns to scale. So this video is kind of designed for, uh, you know, intermediate macroeconomics. Uh, returns to scale is a topic covered throughout microeconomics. And I notice I think there's tons of videos for that. So I'm just going to stick to um, decreasing returns to scale as it applies to macro. And I'm going to try to cover it as quickly as possible because I have this longer overview video of what returns to scale is that I'll link to in the description. So here we're going to start off with an example of a return of a decreasing returns to scale production function and I'll prove it to you that it is but before we can get to decreasing returns to scale let's talk about what returns to scale is so returns to scale refers to how much output changes given a proportional change in all the inputs um, so by returns we're talking about how much does output change you know it's y here sometimes gdp sometimes called real income sometimes called production sometimes called output oh yeah we even call it output uh, and then when we say scale what we're talking about is given a constant proportional change in all the factors so if you can think of initial level of output as y sub naught you know where you have it's a the production function is given these little factors these inputs we have some level of output so I'll use this example here um, the question is, let's say we were to double the inputs. Does that double the output? Is Y1 going to be double the initial level, or is Y1 going to be less than double the initial? Uh, or is Y1 going to be more than double the initial? If our new level of output, given that we've doubled the, um, the inputs, is exactly equal to double the initial, then we'd say that's constant returns to scale. If when we double the um, inputs, we get more than double the initial, then we say that's increasing returns to scale. However, if we double the inputs and we get less than twice the original level of output, we'd call that decreasing returns to scale. And I'll show you that this production function right here is gonna have decreasing returns to scale. Okay, so starting off with the production function here, this is like a you know parameterized Cobb-Douglas production function. We've doubled capital, so I need to put a little two in front of it. Show that I've doubled it. We've doubled labor, so I'm going to put a little two in front of that to show that we doubled it. So uh, let's carry out to the front the at two. So we have two the two two raised to the point two. So I can remove the two in front of capital, and then in front of L we have. 2 to the 0 0.7, so that's times 2 raised to the 0 0.7, times all of this stuff here. So all I've done in this step is I pulled out the 2 in front of capital and the 2 in front of labor. So we have 2 raised to the 0.2 times 2 raised to the 0.7, and when we, um, if we have the same term here, uh, if we want to combine them, all we have to do is add the exponent. So it's going to be 2 raised to the 0.2 plus 0.7. And then the other thing to note is that k raised to the 0.2 times l raised to the 0.7, that's exactly what this term is here, which is our initial level of output. So I could just replace this stuff here with our initial level of output. So um, I haven't finished with uh, simplifying our little 2 term, our scaling factor. So 0.2 plus 0.7, 7, 8, 9. So that's 0.9. So this is 2 raised to the 0.9 times our initial level of output. So what's uh, 2 raised to the 0.9? So we got 2 raised to the 0 0.9 is equal to 1.866. So you got 1.866 times our initial level of output. Now 1.866 times our initial level of output is definitely less than two times the initial level output. So what's happened? We've doubled the inputs, right? And we've led to less than doubling the initial level of output. Remember our initial level of output here had this amount, k to the 0.2, l to the 0.7. By doubling the inputs, we have less than doubled the initial level of output. So we call this decreasing returns to scale. Um, an example of decreasing returns to scale would be, so in macroeconomics, I can't think of any good examples, but in microeconomics, a firm that's very, very small, so say, imagine, you know, a restaurant that's stuck with a very small kitchen. 
So that kitchen has a certain amount of number of chefs working in it and a certain amount of like, you know, production equipment. So like stoves and, and countertop space, all that sort of thing. Uh, it has some amount of production, right? So it produces a certain value of food, you know, a certain amount of food every night. If you were to double the capital and labor, you know, you had twice as much um, cooking equipment and twice as many chefs. Um, there's if the kitchen is sufficiently small, you're not you're not gonna more than you're not gonna double the amount of production. You're gonna less than double that production. So like too many cooks, too many chefs in a kitchen. Um, and that's it. Uh, just to give you kind of a visual example of what it looks like. So uh, bear with me as I set this up. Okay, so this is about constant returns of scale, what I've drawn here. So the Cobb Douglas production function here is k to the 0.4 raised to k to the point to, oh, sorry, times L to the 0.5. So that's approximately a constant returns of scale production function that you see in a lot of intermediate macroeconomics classes. The vertical is the amount of production. Along this axis is the quantity of labor. You can see there's a 5, there's a 10. And along this axis is the amount of capital. So you can see 0, 5 capital, 10 capital. So by combining labor and capital, the vertical height tells you how much production it's produced. So take my word for it. Right here, oh, I did this perfect. So right here, uh, at this point right here, is is five labor and five capital. And you can see that the amount of production is equal to this level, which is going across is about five. So five labor, five capital produces five production. If we were to double labor and capital to this point, you got 10 labor, 10 capital, you then have 10 production. So that's constant returns of scale. If we were to switch this down to decreasing returns of scale, check out what happens. So remember this point right here is five labor, five capital, we have about 2.5 production. If we were to double that labor and capital to 10 labor, 10 capital, we now have only like 3.2 or so production. So that's kind of like the very small firm example where you start off with a kitchen of a certain size, a certain amount of capital, you know, cooking equipment, certain amount of labor, number of chefs. If you double it, you aren't doubling your production. So decreasing returns to scale. Um, hopefully that and the calculator example, calculation example is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, if you found the video helpful, if you would mind clicking the like button, that would be awesome. Um, thanks and have a good day. Bye.